It's going to be a sizzler at the ballpark today. As the Nats and the Yankees get together, Mike O'Connor takes on the second best hitting team in the American League. And the Yankees are now the highest scoring team in all of baseball with 386 runs. It'll be a tough one for Mike in his 11th career start today. First pitch of the game to Johnny Damon. Steve Reich one says Lance Barksdale. 106 first pitch. Opponents batting only 204 against the left hander from Ellicott City and a breaking ball high. It is 89 degrees and rising. It's supposed to get into the mid 90s here today. So those folks sitting out in the sun better stay hydrated. Johnny Damon can't get over the top of that upstairs pitch and it's one ball two strikes. Lance Barkdale Dan Isonia Bob Davidson and crew chief Dale Scott on the bases today. Winner of this game wins the series of course. Nats trying to improve their interleague record to four and two. Johnny Damon on a breaking ball in the dirt strikes out and Robert Fick will throw him out. Southwest Airlines lineup for the Yankees Melky Cabrera to follow and then Derek Jeter Giambi Rodriguez the great Yankees even without Gary Sheffield and Hideki Matsui big day for Johnny Damon a grand slam five RBIs and four hits yesterday but he has already struck out today. Yeah what you did yesterday doesn't mean anything today that's right out of the George Steinbrenner playbook. <laughs> By the way quite a breeze blowing here at the ballpark it is blowing out today. Not that the wind is always a factor in this completely enclosed stadium but the flags are whipping straight out toward left field. I think the ball is really going to carry today. I really believe it's important for Mike O'Connor to throw first pitch strike for the, for the Yankees are a patient team. They will take a lot of pitches and they want to wear that youngster out out there. So they want to force him to throw a lot and get him a little tired and then put him away. Mike O'Connor threw 87 pitches in only five and two thirds against the Rockies on Tuesday night when they got him for six runs on six six and five and two thirds. This one flight out to center. Marlon Bird is right there and he will put away that fly ball for the second out. Nationals defensively with a different look today. Now Royce Clayton was on the field playing catch so his shoulder pretty much OK maybe back in the lineup tomorrow Brendan Harris is actually a shortstop today. Brian Schneider replaced by Robert Fick and Nick Johnson replaced by Darrell Ward. Darrell Ward by the way replacing Nick and they say it might be a couple of days for Nick after he strained that back a little bit during the ball game yesterday. That ball is fly to right off the bat of Derek Jeter and out of play. Jeter, four out of eight in the series with a couple of RBIs. He's only nine for his last 35. Interesting statistic I ran across this morning. In the history of interleague play, the two players who have scored the most runs, Johnny Damon, Derek Jeter. Oh. That's because they're on base a lot. A lot. And don't hang a curveball to Derek Jeter. If you value your, your lips. Well I'll tell you he is an excellent off speed hitter. He's just getting better and better at that as as he ages in baseball aging very gracefully getting better every year. Now you see the Nationals defense today. We just thought we'd show you what it usually would be and then what it is today. Carpenter and center what. <laughs> what are they thinking. Here's Giambi and Jason's only one out of eight in the series. Oh you're on the bench with me then right. Good job by O'Connor to board that fastball in on him. That's where you got to pitch Giambi you leave something out over the plate I don't care if you're right handed or left handed submarine side arm over the top. He will kill it. Giambi only five out of his last 30 and 14 for 48. I would be surprised too if Jeter, if Giambi gets behind in the count, he'll take a shot at stealing second base. 
First of all, to get Giambi out of the count if he's thrown out. Secondly, to get in scoring position and test Robert Fick to see what kind of arm he has. Joe Torre wearing the same wristbands we have on. Joe, a cancer survivor. He is. Big curveball, a little bit high. And the count goes two and one. Look at Joe, he's won 1914. You know, some feel he Ooh. was just about a Hall of Fame player. He'll probably go in as a manager. No question about it. But the combination, very deserving. Oh, he'll, yeah, definitely. Joe Torre as a player hit 297 in his career with over 2300 hits in 17 years nine all star games an MVP in 71 when he hit 363 and Joe Torre didn't have any infield hits then. none he played <laughs> third base for the Cardinals that year he won a gold glove as a catcher with the Milwaukee Braves in 1965 great player 2 one to Giambi he was waiting for that hook. Look at that four World Series titles. And he would be named manager of the year more except that people think he has an easy job so yeah. they don't vote for him. And right. nothing is further from the truth. That's exactly right. That is not an easy job. We've all worked for tough bosses during our during our careers. And Joe does it every year. Two two. Oh and boy. throws the ball away. Yeah, I thought Jeter was going on that pitch. Mm -mm -mm. Well, we're not going to see right now if Robert Fick can throw out Jeter. Jeter didn't look appear like he was going. That ball, geez, that was really wildly thrown. Looked like he held onto that ball too long. Their award had absolutely no chance to catch that one. Now Jeter at second with two outs. Giambi 53 runs batted in. This is kind of look at they've got the entire infield with Zimmerman's standing next to Jeter. So he's going to steal third immediately. Well, he's going to walk to third. Robert Fick has a better chance of covering third than Ryan Zimmerman does. What is he going to do? Throw to Larry Boa, who's uh, I've never seen this before. Okay, Derek, take off. There you go. Giambi hooks this ball into the corner foul. I have never seen that before, ever, ever. Where you're just giving a guy third base. Yeah, right? well, you know, there's a lot of different ways to score. They just want to protect that uh, against the, the here's, single. Here's another thing, and not that Giambi is a bunter, but if he bunted the ball hard, Jeter, Jeter would score. Yeah. Absolutely. If nobody could do a thing about it. Yeah, if he could slap a ball to the left side, Jeter could, you know, would crawl home if you wanted to. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Look at him. He's just taking off right now. So you get a better job. Oh, maybe get a block out of it. Now why would Mike O'Connor even worry about him? Well he did. He put something in his mind because he's a rookie. And there's 45,000 people here and he's pitching against the New York Yankees. Now there is someone covering home so he can't walk any further. Well on a wild pitch now. Yeah, if you bounce a breaking ball. Boy, he hung one instead. Those hangers go a long way. But Mike has got to establish that curve. I'd like to see him bust them inside. He's thrown him enough curveballs in this at bat. You might as well throw that fastball in. They gave see, Jeter a stolen base, by the way. It is not fielders in Why not? <laughs> I don't understand that at all. That's that's a stolen base, but Hmm. I think they should all be stolen bases, I do too. by the way. That fielder's indifference thing is silly. It's, it is. If he steals, he steals. And if he strikes oh. out, he strikes out, and the inning is over. Two Ks for O'Connor. He wasn't worried about throwing the breaking ball in the dirt with the runner at third, was he? Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By the redesigned, rededicated Red Roof Inn and a core hotel. By PNC Bank. By Geico, where a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
and by Southwest Airlines. With more flights to more places than ever before, Southwest is taking low fares farther. Visit Southwest.com. Greatest flight plan in America. The approach to National Airport right down the Potomac. Can't make that left turn anymore. There'll be some fighter jets on you. We go to the bottom of the Thanks. first inning after a crazy top of the first. And the National Southwest Airlines starting lineup featuring Alfonso Soriano. Two for seven with a homer and two RBIs in the series. More importantly, Soriano has scored three runs in the two games. That's the bottom line. And he's tied for second in the National League with those 54 runs he has scored. Only Jose Reyes of the Mets with more. This is Chen Ming Wong, spelled Wang, but pronounced Wong. And this guy is 6 0 in day games this year. He must be hard to pick up. And Tom, he's a big fella. Wong goes 6'3, 220. He's 26 years of age. He is that. He's got a great sinker. Talking with Ken Singleton, their TV voice before the game today, he will get a lot of ground balls, relies heavily on his defense, and he's got a pretty good one out there. He's from Taiwan, former member of the Chinese uh -oh. Olympic team, and Alfonso Soriano out of the Dominican Republic with a base hit to start things off. All right, let's see if Alfonso gets aggressive and steals like he did late in the game yesterday. Got a pitch up, and that's where he can't operate. Wong. Right up the middle didn't hit it hard but Jeter was playing him in the hole thinking he might turn over that top hand a little bit and I am so looking forward yes. to today's keys to this oh, game which oh, we will oh, see oh, shortly. Oh, oh, oh. I think we ought to hold the fans in a little mystery for a while. Here's Jose Vidro Jose with a couple of hits in the series. Wong does not appear to be that quick to home plate. Soriano now with 17 stolen bases on the year. He's been caught seven times. He's the only major leaguer with as many as 15 homers and 15 steals. Some other guys are broken into the 10 10 club, but not the 15 15, soon to be 20 20. They thought he was going on first pitch. Well, Posada's real good behind the plate, very quick release. He's just trying to improve his chances, but it gives Vidro the opportunity to pull the ball here. On the ground, maybe create a first and third situation if Soriano stays put. There's the strike, and the count's even. Jose Vitro hitting 303 from the left side, 287. Bright sunshiny day. He's got the shades on. Something you never used to see years and years ago. Well, you know, they, they, well, yeah, but the shades are so good now. Got these blue blockers now. Probably makes oh. the ball look bigger and brighter. And we used to have those flap down glasses that you'd wear only in the outfield. And now they've got these things. They're so perfect. They just brighten up everything and it doesn't cause any depth perceptions problems either. So those are terrific. Yeah. Robinson Cano likes them for second base. A lot of guys hit with those things. Fastball moving away from Jose and he goes upstairs with it. Tom Glavin's put a zero on the board in the top of the first. The Orioles are trying to sweep the Mets today. How about that? Lowen and Glavin and Tom Glavin looking for number 10. Roy Halliday is pitching for Toronto at Florida. And the Marlins are red hot winning seven in a row. They're tied with Atlanta. A half game back of the Nets. Yeah, Florida's been real hot. They're playing well with that young team. A lot of good youngsters on that Marlins club. Vitro with a slow bouncer to second. Cano to Jeter. And the Yankees turn the 4 6 3 double play. Their 61st double play of the year. Jim Coleman, Toyota.com, with our much anticipated keys to the game. Well, we must have to have to explain these, obviously. For the Yankees, New York loves left handers. Boy, that was beautiful graphics right there. Our lovely Lisa. They kill left handed pitching at 14 and 5, and whether he's right or whether he's wrong. <laughs> well, right pitched on Friday, and he wasn't very good. He gave up five runs. So Wong wants to be right today. For the Nationals, just rewards on dad days. Daryl and his dad, Gary, here in the house. And let's take it to the house today. 
forty five thousand fans here want to see a Nats victory. Well most of them do. Well there's a few. NY hats there's around. a few scoundrels in the gathering today. Well that was beautiful wasn't it how that and that was your idea too I must say on the heart New York. Well you know the t-shirts yeah. I heart yeah. NY so right. we did a little takeoff on that. And Brilliant. Uh, it's amazing that our graphics machine would even have a heart in it. Brilliant. <laughs> and of course the bases are decorated for Father's Day fighting prostate cancer today. Big logo right behind home plate. And it's a very serious day as well. We heard Tommy Lasorda here with Mr. Milken several nights ago talking about this and here it is. It's this particular day. There's a home run challenge. Certain games have been designated and home runs hit in those games will result in contributions toward prostate cancer research. Jose Guillen gets jammed and he serves one out into left center. Nationals have their second base hit. He certainly did. Well he will get a lot of balls hit off the fist by right handers because that sinking fastball pours in on him very effectively. And Wong has been right his last two times out. Jorge Posada behind the plate today. Yankees have their regular defense out there at least their regular defense with Gary Sheffield hurt and Hideki Matsui. Yeah can you believe those two guys are out but they're getting I think Cabrera's a good hitter and Bernie Williams has become rejuvenated but yeah. you'd still rather have those two guys obviously. Here's Darrell Ward in this series he is four for six. Evidently he did not want dad getting them all over him about his hitting this weekend Gary Ward is in town and Daryl's putting a show on for his dad who is a very fine major league hitter himself. Oh he was a great hitter plus he was a major league hitting coach too with the White Sox for a few years and in the organization. Right though coming off Wong excuse me is coming off of two wins against Boston and Cleveland where he worked seven innings both times. Gave up just one run in 14 innings, so he's hot. Darrell reaching for that one that goes dribbling by the mound, and Cano plays it very relaxed. Nationals get two hits and leave a runner, and after one, no score on Father's Day. Top of the second. Well, good news after yesterday's crazy game. It is scoreless early. Maybe both pitchers will have a nice, steady game today. It is sizzling out in the sun. Fans keeping cool any way they can. Alex Rodriguez yesterday got a home run. 15th of the year and the 444th of his career after some advice from his hitting coach Don Mattingly who was very happy about that. And Tom it's a question of hitting the ball straight away right. Well it is to a certain extent but you know he's got to trust his hands as Frank Robinson preaches slow down his body and trust his hands. He was really jumping out there especially on Friday night. He didn't take a good swing. But when you jump out there early your your hands slow down and you can't trust them. We were hoping a rod would get hot tomorrow. In Philadelphia that's where the Yankees are going for their next three games. Yeah, While the Nats are leaving for Boston tonight. That'll be fun. Alex at six for his last 30. That's a fastball for a strike. I mentioned his home run total 449. Well 444 when he hits 449 he will tie Jeff Bagwell for number five I'm sorry number 32 in the all time list five more to get there. And you just wonder if we've seen Jeff Bagwell hit his last home run. I think yes we have sad but probably true. One and two to a rod target inside fastball got in there and he fought it off. Yeah, if you're going to pitch a rod inside you better get it in there. Get it just in off the plate he's got very long arms and he likes to extend as we have seen for at least 444 times. He hit eight home runs and drove in 28 in the month of May chosen as the American League player of the month. So something happened to him. At the end of that month on into June where he has struggled with only 15 hits in his last 61 at bats. Yeah. Well you know he's been regarded as the best player in baseball for the last four or five years and I you know there's a little pressure attached to that so they expect you to do something great every game. Tough thing to deal with huh Tom. Darn right it is. I wish I had that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sure you were the best player at a lot of levels. On Ham your way to the major leagues, most major well, leaguers are. Hamtramck Pony League, I was. 
That's huge. And a breaking ball is up high from O'Connor. Alex Rodriguez working the count to three and two with Jorge Posada and Robinson Cano coming up next. Every time the Yankee fans start their let's go Yankees chant, <laughs> the national fans boo them out of business. Great. Three two. He walked him to lead off the inning. National League East and who would have thunk that the Atlanta Braves any time after the first couple of weeks of any season would be tied for last place. Yeah that's amazing nine games under 500 and, and no relief in sight they're just the relief pitching has been just absolutely horrible. And, and I think uh, Tom the entire baseball world is waiting for John Sherholtz to pull the trigger on something. I think and he's got some uh, some bullets to deal with. He's, he's got, got some young players oh, yeah. he can deal. That's for sure if they decide to go that route unless they decide well let's rebuild and go ahead do something special for next year but and I don't Atlanta's know. a funny place they don't fill the ballpark when they're going well if they're in this position for a month or two you're going to see a lot of empty seats in yeah, Turner Field absolutely John told me himself several years ago our fans have come to take winning for granted very much so well that's their problem. The Nationals have plenty of their own. Royce Clayton is banged up. Could be in the lineup tomorrow in Boston. Nick Johnson strained his back a little. Could be a couple of days for him. Randy St. Clair now out to talk to Mike O'Connor, who suddenly seems to be aiming the ball. Well, you know what I think it is, Bob? He's throwing every pitch upstairs. I mean, he's not getting the ball down, so that tells me he's not finishing off his pitches. That could look throwing a lot of high curve balls. He bounced a couple up there that he got Damon and Giambi to go fishing after, but they were nowhere near the strike zone. So I think that's what Randy's out there telling him. Hey, you got to finish these pitches off and you got to keep the ball down. Give your fielders a chance. Posada's a dangerous hitter from the right side. In the ball game yesterday, Jorge Posada batting a left-handed, and he hit his ninth of the year. Jorge Posada now with 184 career home runs. He's a sense to reach 200 soon. He's 34 years old right now. He'll have another birthday in the middle of August. Classic example: low ball hitter, left-handed; high ball hitter, right-handed. So That's Mike throws him a low one right handed and misses ball two. Yeah. He, he, he's a great low ball hitter left handed. It's amazing. He'll go to all fields and the homer he hit yesterday was on the pitch down and in. Right handed he likes the ball up a little more. As do most switch hitters and I don't know why. Posada has only grounded into one double play this year. He's one of those guys who does not wear batting gloves. He had a pitch up and he was trying to jump on it. Counts even two and two. Yeah, the best example of a high ball hitter, and we don't, we're not able to see him, is Gary Sheffield. He keeps his back shoulder up better than anybody I think in baseball, and that's why he's such a good fastball hitter, especially a high fastball hitter. He really is taking his place as one of the great all-time Yankee catchers. And they've had some great ones. Oh yeah, man, you look down the list. Yes. There's a great pitch on the inside corner. And Mike O'Connor gets his third strikeout. Posada gave up on it, had a little run to it, and it just caught the strike zone. Yeah, he filled it up right there, thigh high, inside corner. Jorge brought his hands forward a little bit and couldn't pull the trigger. So here's Cano. Now, this guy can hit. I'll tell you what. He's hitting 332. I think he's, he's hitting a ton on the road. And he has a 15 game hitting streak. Yeah. 452 he's hitting in his last 15 ball games. Let's have a look at our Toyota League leaders, American League batting leaders. Jet catcher Joe Maurer doing a great job for Minnesota. Ichiro, he's always up there, but man, hitting 363. Look at these numbers. Yeah. And Gary Matthews Jr. Who's nowhere near that as a career hitter? Oh gosh, well, he's just found it. You know, he's in his low early 30s. I think Gary Matthews Jr. is just now getting it. Big curveball. 
That one got in on his hands. Popped up and Brendan Harris is there for the second out. There is a classic example of a backup curveball and the hitter jamming himself. He was expecting that pitch to break out over the plate. Another look at the jam job. Man, he really got jammed. He certainly did. Yeah, he's, a, he's looking for that pitch to break out over the middle of the plate so he can attack it, and it just never got there, and he kind of pushes the bat through. Here's Bernie Williams, and he too a switch hitter. Bernie hitting 243 left handed and 361 from this side of the plate. That's amazing. You know, left handed, he's had 140 at bats. This side, he's at 61. He's hit the same number of homers from each side and driven in almost the same number of runs. You know, I have always considered Bernie Williams. I, you know, he's hit 400 in certain years right handed in this league. Well, in the American League. Good fastball by O'Connor. I think this first time through the order, we're seeing the byproduct of some of these Yankees seeing Mike live and in person for the first time. No doubt about it. His, his test today, Tom, will be the second and third time. No through. question about it. Because they will test you, these guys. They will take pitches and what, they will go to work on you. What a great career. This ball hit to right field. Jose Guillen is right there. He will grab it about 370 feet away. Yankees leave a runner. They've stranded two. The red hot Zimmerman straight ahead. It's Father's Day. Dad's got the sleeves up, the ball cap on, trying to keep everybody cool. He'll be spending serious money for some refreshments very shortly. I guarantee you that. Let's have a look at our game notes for today. Alfonso Soriano in this house, a homer every 10 at bats. Yankees have some bullpen problems, don't they? Soriano, Mariano, wow. And then Ryan Zimmerman leading all major league rookies with his 44 runs batted in and he's had four of them in this series on four hits. That's a good trivia question right there. Whose record rookie record will he break once he gets to 39. Do you know. No. Maybe a good. Ah, Has this question. franchise had any rookies of the year. I believe so. That'd be interesting to look up as well. I think Andre Dawson. Maybe Ellis Valentine maybe Tim Raines. Maybe Larry Walker. Larry Walker. Boy, those guys could play there. Well, Tom, we're going to go back to 1969 for the answer to your question. Ryan Zimmerman with a six game hitting streak. Little breaking ball catches the inside corner. How about the initial CL? Cog Levois. You're not far off. Coco LeBoy. <laughs> In a thousand years, I wouldn't have guessed. No way Coco we would have LeBoy. had that one. That's a lot of RBIs. Go on a pitch up, a swinging bunt. Zimmerman is oh. first. Whoa. Man. He appeared to be there. Dan Isania punches him out. Well, I was hoping that that ball would stay fair because Ryan gets down the line very quickly, but he got a bad jump out of the box here. He's on his heels a little bit. See right there, he's got to regroup and then he gets going. Wong, Ooh, I don't that think so. Safe. That looked like a tie. Umpire nah, missed it. He missed it. That's right. He was he was safe. Tie goes to the runner. Yeah, he hit the front of the bag just exactly the way he's supposed to, too. That's what made him safe, but he called him out anyway. Man, that ball hit about a foot foul, and Alex Rodriguez never moved. He didn't expect that. Should have been a hit. Yep. Darn Yankees. They had to write a play about that. They should. Sing songs. Bring in, in the, the dirt devil. one ball one strike bring in the devil. <laughs> Robert Fick with a hit and an RBI in this series. He's now hitting 280 7 of 25 and as a pinch hitter this year. Robert is three for eight with a couple of ribbies. We knew as soon as he started getting some at bats that he was capable of this. 
Fastball high in the zone, one and two. Now Wang throws hard. That was 93. He usually gets the start against tough lefties. He's surprised that Randy Johnson isn't pitching today. <laughs> but now Robert can hit. There's no doubt about it. And he gets big hits too. Three RBIs. They have all meant something. Slider. You throw a fastball, which is a sinker, at varying speeds, up as high as 93, which is really quick. A little bit of a slider, which was what we just saw, and a straight changeup. And right down to first for Giambi, two outs. Here's one for you kids, ages 8 to 12. You can audition to be the Nationals junior broadcaster on July 9th when kids run the show. Go to ESPNZone.com slash Washington, D.C. Ten finalists will be selected to perform live at ESPN Zone. Two winners, one goes to radio, one comes and joins Tom and me here in the booth on Sunday, July 9th. That'll be a lot of fun three weeks from today. That's the last day before the All-Star break. Brendan Harris takes a fastball low. Starting his seventh game of the year, his third start at short. He has started two there, two at second, two at third. You know, with my luck, little Bobby Costas is going to come in on that day. <laughs> or young Vin Scully. Yeah, if some kid walks in with a Farmer John hot dog, we're both out of here. Farmer John, yeah. Yeah, we're done. Two of them. <laughs> One and one to Brendan Harris. And that fastball is low and away, ball three. That's looking for some base runners here. They had two of them in the first when Soriano let off with a hit. But Avidro 463 wiped him out, and then Jose Guillen dropped a base hit in the left center. Well, here on three and one, you got to pick pick a pitch you like and swing hard in case you hit it. Ooh. Brendan did and flies out to Johnny Damon. And the Nationals go in order in the second. It looks like Wong and O'Connor are going to match up pretty well today. Father's Day at the ballpark. Probably the two greatest places a father can be on this day. One at the ballpark and maybe two hitting that golf ball somewhere. Or fishing. Fishing would fishing be. Fishing for yeah. golf balls. That might be <laughs> tied for a second. <laughs> hey, next Saturday, we're going to carry the Saturday game now. It's been moved to a 4.30 start at Camden Yards. So in the District of Columbia, we're on WDCA 20. Masson outside the district. Tom and I will be there to tell you about game two. So we will have all three now of the series at Baltimore next weekend. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from Boston. Monday and Tuesday will be on Channel 20 as well. Off day Thursday. Chin Ming Wong 0 for 1 as a hitter in his big league career. And this is where the National League really has the advantage. If a pitcher can help himself swing in the bat. And let's see you later. That wasn't very long for Wong. He, but you know, you what you at, say? Did Wong, you say that wasn't very long, long for Wong? No, he didn't stand up there very long. He's not a very good hitter. He never gets any at bats. Whereas in the National League, those hitters hit regularly. Backdoor curveball. See you later. But how about Chris Benson homering off Pedro yesterday? That was something. You know, and and if you can bunt too. You know, if you in these games like this, this guy never bunts either. It's a big advantage for the National League. Much more so. Than when the American League plays in their ballparks against National League teams. Johnny Damon fouls one away, one ball and one strike. Damon struck out on a pitch in the dirt his first time up. Grand slam yesterday. He can muscle up occasionally. He's already hit 10 homers. Well, he, he takes that top hand off the bat about as quick as anybody. He's very strong, too, along with that great speed he has. He's a heck of a player. You know, even with 
with Sheffield and Matsui out of the lineup I think the Yankees lineup is about as good as anybody has in baseball. Yeah. They're second best in average and as you just pointed out Bob they, they lead the world in runs scored. So th their pitching is their deficiency. Johnny Damon all, almost always seems to me like his feet are off the ground <laughs> when he makes contact. He does and he can take some weird swings some ugly at bats. And just when you think you've got him, he'll just rip you. 266 against lefties is sure not too bad. 2 2 pitch. O'Connor goes with a breaking pitch. He left it out over the plate. And Johnny Damon will fly out high and far Ooh. on a fly ball that is in the seats at Yankee Stadium. Oh, but yeah. Not here. Yeah, that's way back. Johnny just missed this one. You get a hanging breaking ball like this. Oh boy, he just dipped that shoulder just a hair. You see that right there, and got underneath it. Yeah, you're you're right. He's doing a little dance up at the plate, but it's very efficient for him. And if you ever want to know if a ball's going out of the ballpark, just watch the hitter. When he dips his head, that means it's staying in. He yeah. knew he did not get it. Right. But it's still the ball's carrying well today. Nobody's yeah. really centered one yet. Melky Cabrera fly to center first time up. And when Tom's talking about centered, he means the center of that bat on the sweet spot. And Mike O'Connor's doing a good job of keeping the ball away from there. Ten pitches, 45 through three in a scoreless game. Bottom of the third, it'll be Bird O'Connor and Soriano for the Nationals. Nationals with a three and two record in interleague play. And last year Washington was 12 and 6. So interleague play has been very good to them. But the Yankees are the second best all time. With 95 wins and 66 losses. That's real good. 29 games over 500. Yeah. The best team of all time in interleague the Oakland, Oakland Athletics yeah. who are 97 and 65. And by the way, it doesn't hurt that they're on a current nine game winning streak. After beating the Dodgers again last night. Well, there goes my theory on the National League having the advantage because of the lack of the designated hitter. Now, th that is in their ballpark, though. You know, that particular series is in their ballpark. Oh, sure. But, yeah, you would think Overall, the National League would really. Benefit. I would think so. But, Tom, there's an interesting number out there. Ooh. Marlon Bird misses a breaking ball. Coming into this year. 1104 wins by the National League. 1096 by the American League and just an eight game difference in 10 years. That's amazing. Yeah, but it's all equally amazing that the National League. I guess your theory holds up to a certain extent. The National League does have a an advantage albeit a slight one. Well, isn't that something 10 years only eight games difference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and well I think right now too that the, the shifting of powers it goes in you know like in decades shift and right now I think it's in the American League's favor with all due respect yeah. to the great players of the National League but I just think that there's more right now in the American. One ball and two strikes. Yeah they've been winning most of the All Star games lately and the World Series. Wong will do it himself. No need to chance a throw. It would have been a bang bang play. He can get in on right handed hitters. The last two starts of his. Going 14 and a third innings. Giving up one run. So he is on a hot streak right now. That sinker. And he relies on a pretty good defensive infield. You, know, you take Giambi is not a good defensive first baseman. He's usually DH. And, but with uh, A Rod, Jeter, and Cano, that's very good. Michael Connor one for 19 is a big league hitter with an RBI. Strike one. And with Wang Wong excuse me you have to make him get the ball up. When he's around the knees that thing is going to dip way below it and you'll hit a weak ground ball like right there. Or Tor miss it. Yeah. Toronto has a run at Florida second inning. Orioles have a run at Shea third inning. Boston at Atlanta is the Sunday night game. O'Connor strikes out on three pitches. 
And Wong with his first strikeout of the day. It's worth a look going back to what Alfonso Soriano did yesterday. He was already on base with a walk. Then he steals second. Going to third, the throw gets away. Tom, that tied the game. And it evidently rattled Rivera because he walked Darrell Ward and then gave up the big hit to Guillen. Yeah, you're right, because uh, Rivera doesn't hardly walk people. And he doesn't rattle either. He never gets rattled. And plus, uh, Guillen was hitting out of the shadows, too. It's tough to see at that time of the game. Good fastball running to the inside corner. Wang first pitch strikes. Four of them to the first nine hitters. Mike O'Connor was six out of nine in his first three. Oh man. Soriano made up his mind he was going to swing no matter what. That ball was going to hit him. How did that not break his bat? He didn't hit it hard enough. That is filthy right there. I mean, he's right on top of the plate. You got to clear that front side if you're going to hit that pitch. That ball I thought was going to hit him right in the chest. He likes Yankee pitching. Wong spends a lot of time over the rubbers with that wind up. He's very effective. If you get him in a stretch situation you can get to this guy much more comfortable with the long pause at the top spending time over the rubber and then dealing getting all his momentum going forward boy it just his rhythm and timing is so good from the wind up that sinker is really special. It's kind of interesting at least early in a lot of ball games, lots of zeros on the board. There are great pitchers pitching today. Looks like Mr. Wong has a contingent of fans rooting for him. Soriano got to pitch up. You got Tom Glavin, Roy Halliday, Josh Johnson, John Garland, Aaron Harang, Johan Santana, John Smoltz, Kurt Schilling tonight, Chris Carpenter, Kenny Rogers, all pitching today. Maybe some low scoring games around baseball. And by the way, Mark Pryor against Kenny Rogers is starting yeah. for the Cubs. Soriano just got a piece of it. Looks like a bit of an off speed pitch that had his bat slowed down. Now the Marlins have just scored to tie the Braves, or rather tie the Blue Jays, 1 1 early. Marlins are a half game behind the Nats, tied with the Braves. Soriano tried to pull an outside pitch, and that's what usually happens. Ground ball to short. He's gone, and so are the Nats. That's seven in a row for Chen Ming Wong. Scoreless game through three. All right, Dad <laughs> digs the Nationals. I like it. Cool. <laughs> what a great awesome. sign. Very accurate with the curly W, by the way. It's the fourth inning, and it's time in a scoreless game for baseball trivia from our good friends at. The Yankees captain after Lou Gehrig in chronological order. Well, if he came after Lou, I guess it would be chronological. The scooter. Chronologic. Rizzuto Jeter. Jeter Rizzuto, okay. Who else was a Yankee captain? Billy Martin was a captain, wasn't he? I don't think so. No. But who was after Lou Gehrig? Maybe they didn't have one. You know they might have had a might long a long time between captains is what I'm thinking. Scooter Rizzuto became one. Yeah, he might be the next. Maybe Bill Dickey. One of their great catchers huh. Yeah. I don't think Yogi was captain. Eric Jeter. Nobody would understand what he was saying. To <laughs> <laughs> Yogi. He's responsible for the Affleck. Trivia questions. Let's see. I'm going with Dickey Jeter Rizzuto. Chronological Maybe. order, though, you would have to go Rizzuto Jeter. Oh, oh, chronological. Oh, yeah. Duh, I'm going alphabetical. 
Excuse me. Uh, chronological would be Dicky Rizzuto Jeter. Man, one word and we're all out yeah. of whack. All right, one out in the fourth. Jason Giambi will be next. Here comes the shift. Fortunately, Jeter not on base this time to steal second. Take a Sunday stroll to third. Ryan Zimmerman, they keep moving him, moving him, <laughs> moving him, and right now he's almost right behind the pitcher's mound and second base. Look at this. There he is, pulls the ball on the ground. Darrell Ward to Mike O'Connor. Perfect. Had a couple of defensive backs, and the, the linebackers were all over there covering, so Jambi had no chance. So the Tom and I don't have to worry about chronological anymore. Here comes an immediate answer Jeez. to our trivia. We may have gotten this. Dickie Tom Rizzuto. said Dickey, Rizzuto, and Jeter. Oh my God, the Yankee cap. Thurman Munson. See, it was a long time between captains, wasn't it? Oh, I thought, oh, who served? I thought that was a general question of, of. So they didn't have a captain for all those years? 40 years or so? Man. Well, for a lot of that time, DiMaggio and Mantle were the inspirational leaders. Oh, yeah. And of course, Mickey was the social director. Yeah. <laughs> it got in the way. Couldn't be captain, too. <laughs> <laughs> Would have cut yeah. into his other duties. He was having too much fun. Mickey Mantle, maybe one of the most, you know, top two or three gifted players to ever play the game. And the, the knee injuries just killed him. But still able to perform at an unbelievable level for a lot of years. 0 2 target inside. Fastball got in there, and Alex Rodriguez fouled it straight back. Mike O'Connor is cruising right now. He's retired eight consecutive Yankees since walking this batter, A Rod, getting a visit from his pitching coach to lead off the second inning. Since then, Mike's been great. And A Rod just expands his strike zone and hits that ball about 250 feet out into right center field. Well, that was a changeup that hung up and out over the plate, and J A, a Rod just kind of flipped it over the infield. But the Yankees are a team that they can explode on you. Two outs really doesn't mean that much. He's got that leg kick going. He's just so good. Not a good swing, but he's able to just kind of flip it, keep his hands back long enough. I just wonder if A Rod, if the word has filtered back to him, that Tom Pachorek knows a way that he could be even better. Oh, yeah, right. Well, yeah, I just don't like the leg kick, and I'm not a fan of that. And that's that would be the only suggestion. If A Rod would sit there, sit back like poo holes, and just turn his front shoulder, he's so strong, he doesn't need to stride. But, you know, that's only one theory. Yeah. You know, you got a guy like that who's been. 30 years old he's been hitting that way for 20 years well hard to tell him to change well, actually I don't remember him having a leg kick before he got to Texas he shouldn't have needed it there to hit the ball out of the park no now it's 2 and 0 to Posada this is a lineup that just never gives you a chance to be comfortable uh -uh. and you know Posada as we pointed out his last time up really likes the ball up right handed. Posada struck out looking first time up when Mike O'Connor got a two strike count on him and buzzed him under his hands with a fastball. See how much Joe Torre trusts Posada here and see if he allows him to swing on three and oh. No swing needed four pitch walk. So he had Alex Rodriguez 0 and 2 hung a change up. And now he's walked Posada on four, turning this into a stressful inning. Yep, and Robert Fick out to discuss things with him. Robert works well with the pitchers. He calls a good game. So, you know, there's no drop off there. Naturally, he doesn't throw as well as Brian Schneider. But he'll call a good game. He knows the hitters in this league, and hopefully, he can find a way to get Cano out here, who's a very dangerous hitter. Coming into this game, the American League leads in interleague this year, 41 to 29. And that's interesting because 11 of the matchups this weekend 
are in the National League parks. Yeah, that is that's significant. Big curveball for a strike to Robinson Cano. The crowd is battling again. The Yankees got their chance started. The Nats fans boot him down. Now everybody takes a breath in between pitches and we get deathly quiet for a moment. Tom and I mentioned Friday night it's almost like being at a college football game with some divided loyalties. Great atmosphere all weekend. That's a breaking ball up and in. And the counts even 1 1. Now the Yankee fans are booing. And Mike jumped out there to throw that pitch. He didn't stay back at all. Arm was dragging behind him. Still 1 0. Orioles over the Mets in the third. Marlins and Blue Jays tied 1 1 in the third. And Tampa Bay has a run at Philadelphia. The Phillies have lost six in a row. And if you go back to last weekend, the Phillies have lost nine out of ten. Yeah, they're scuffling. Now one and two now. You know, you got to get this guy's because you're going to get Bernie Williams from the right side of the plate if you don't. How's, how strong are you when Bernie Williams is hitting the eighth? Very, very strong. Two on, two out. Pitcher steps off, hitter steps out, umpire claps. Let's go, boys. The count's one and two. Pitch up, pop up. Same pitch. Robert Fick finding it. Got rid of the mask. Pass could catch. It wasn't pretty, but everybody can head for the dugout anyway. Two stranded by the Yankees, and now they've left four. Scoreless game. We're going bottom four. Great matchup. It's sizzling outside for the fans in the sun. And we're going to tell you about nationals.com. Make it your online source for info on the hometown team. Updated news, promotional days, special offers, a chat room. It's all at nationals.com where baseball is always on. You can check on ticket information. And by the way, you'll find the news there that we will be televising our game next Saturday from Baltimore on WDCA 20 and Masson. 4.30 next Saturday, Nats O's. We'll be now, there. John Patterson did pitch at Potomac last night. Not great results. He gave up eight runs in five innings. But according to Nationals observers, he did throw the ball well. We may see him Friday night in Baltimore. That has not been determined just yet. Well, as long as he's healthy, you know, he told us last week, remember, that the mound at Potomac was terrible. They're, the they are offer. addressing that. They are no. addressing that. That doesn't help. When in fact, the Nats are sending some of their grounds crew down to Potomac after this home stand to check on the mound, which John Patterson said didn't have any clay, all dirt, so you right. land and you're sliding and all you're over sliding. the place. You can get hurt. You don't need million-dollar pitchers doing that. Ah, 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 ah. And really, you don't want your minor league guys doing that either. Good grief, you've given those guys a lot of money up front. Bottom of the fourth, Jose Vidro bounced into a 4 6 3 his first time up. He has a hitter's count 2 0. Slaps it right side over to his left, Robinson Cano. That play didn't require a lot of range, but we've been impressed with his range in this he series. He can play, he can really play. Robinson Cano, one of the, the best. Young player to come through the Yankee system, I think, since Bernie Williams. He's only 23 years of oh, age. He can hit, he can play. His dad, Jose, had a six game cup of coffee with the 1989 Houston Astros. So Junior is going to play in the big leagues a lot longer than that. Jose Guillen got fisted first time, got himself a base hit. Wasn't that a great swing he put on that triple yesterday? Perfect. Well, he got a pitch down out over the plate, and he just went with it. Mariano's cutter, I don't know if it was cutting so much. He had to pitch, what, an inning and two-thirds on Friday to get the win. Tom, because this pitcher is big, and he spends so much time over the rubber as he goes back into his windup, is he hard to pick up? I mean, what what challenges you against a guy like well, this? Well, he yeah, he he has a very deceptive delivery. You know, you have to wait and be patient because he's patient. 
throughout his delivery, but his motion is, is not overly deceptive, but he does throw his glove at you. But he's a big guy. Most big guys do have a, a certain amount of deception. Little extra hang time you have to have. Like right there, he's getting himself all together. That's why he's so good from the windup. Kenny well, Singleton told me before the game, you got to get this guy working from the stretch. Mm. I mean, he's just so nice, pausing, making sure everything is in line, and then Wang. I mean, Wong. <laughs> right to the right to the plate. I mean, out of a stretch, he can't do that. He's got to be quicker. That's why you got to get some guys on. Jose lays off. Wong formerly pitched for the Chinese Olympic team. He's from Taiwan. Well, he's a heck of a find to go seven and two for the Yanks. Never played professionally in the Far East. It's all been as a professional in this country, starting at 2000 with Staten Island. 3-2 to Jose with one out. Ow. There goes the bat and the ball out to short. And Derek Jeter <laughs> will throw him out. We have a Coors Light cold blast for you. And Tom, this was not a cold blast. It was a hot one. Man. He got an inside fastball and crushes it. Darrell Ward might be the best fastball hitter on this team. He and Soriano. Can really get after that number one, and he crushes it upstairs. Five home runs in 50 at bats now this year. Well, look for that fastball right here. Try and put another point on the board here, or the first one. Right off the end of the bat. That's what Wong did doing the first time up. Darrell pulled that one. This one right back to the pitcher. That sinker's going. Those were three ground ball outs. Nothing like a dad celebrating his first Father's Day. Mom's got the little Nikes ready if they're necessary. <laughs> Isn't that great? And then, that, of course, he's probably had six or seven Father's Days. Some of us have had many, many, many more than that. What a great day to be at the ballpark for all the dads and their young ones. And we go to the top of the fifth inning. Bernie Williams got the big blow Friday night tie game, and he took care of the rest. Bernie loves the ball out over the plate, especially left handed. And he crushed that one out of here. That was a change up, it looked like, from Chad Cordero. Big hit of that game on Friday. He's got great hands. But he should. He plays classical guitar as his off the field endeavor. And he's got a base hit up the middle to lead off the fifth inning. That's the second time today the Yankees have put their leadoff man on. Yeah, first pitch fastballs up and out over the plate. Bernie knows what to do with that one. Nice effort by, there by Harris, but really no chance to get that one. So well, let's see if Wayne can bunt here. And Tom, you talked about this last time up. We don't even know if he can. Yeah. This is a situation where Ward and Zimmerman can really oh, you seriously it. charge. Just stand right next to him. It's going to be almost impossible. Even with Bernie, look at this. Get foul. Oh, you got to throw him high. Hard ones here. Adaro really wasn't charging that much there. Well, he's got to try and hold Bernie on because he still has good enough speed to steal a base. Robert Fick is ready to pop up out of his stance as well. That ball is fouled straight back, and now it's 0-2. That's a tough thing to do to ask a pitcher, American League pitcher, to come in a ball game and hit. And then, of course, sacrifice bunting is not the easiest thing in the world to do either. But Joe Torre knows the limitations that you have in this type of competition. Looking at Bernie Williams, he hasn't even attempted a stolen base this year, so they want to keep his legs fresh. And he tried to bunt a breaking ball. Wong is gone. And for Mike O'Connor, his fifth strikeout of the day. Here's our Corona Extra, miles from ordinary factoid, as we check in on Joe Torrey. His amazing 1971 season, as you mentioned, playing third base in St. Louis when he was the most valuable player. 230 <laughs> hits. Unbelievable. That's a ton. That is for a guy who never got a leg hit. 
137 RBIs, 352 total bases, led the league. Something. And a lot of people forget that he was a gold glove catcher before that. Yeah, yeah. The only time I ever saw Joe Torre struggle behind the plate was when Phil Negro was on the Oh, mound. really? How about Hoyt Wilhelm? <laughs> <laughs> that would drive you nuts. You know, believe it or not, I thought Hoyt Wilhelm's knuckler moved more than any other that I'd ever seen. Johnny Damon chops one foul to the right side, counts even 1-1. One, one. Johnny 0 for 2 today, 5 out of 12 in the series. Yeah, Hoyt would have his head cocked to the side. You think, where's he looking at? You know, and then he'd throw that thing. It would start behind your head, do the dipsy do, the boogaloo, and boom, right there. So, you know, I don't know how anybody ever got a hit off him. Trying to catch a butterfly. Ow. There's a busted bat. Hurry. O'Connor to first. Proper play. Two outs, and Johnny Damon is. 0 for 3. He's You're pitched Johnny uh, pretty effectively, but that time it was a check swing jammer. Yeah. Ow, man. That could be painful. That's the second best jam job we've seen today. Yep. I'll tell you what. Charlie Huff once told me, your old teammate, yes. that the knuckleball was the most fickle friend he ever had. <laughs> and he was right, too. Just mention the name Mark Salas, and Charlie will have a nightmare. <laughs> the Chief wore Charlie out. Couldn't get him out. And he was a catcher. Other catchers couldn't catch it or hit Yeah, him. that's very true. And uh, we were playing a game in Minnesota one time, and Salas wasn't in the lineup and Charlie's going, what the heck's going on here? Well, they had, he didn't know they had traded him in the middle of the game. Line drive, right field. Guillen yes. is right there. And the Nationals get a break. In contrast Ooh. to yesterday, this one is all pitchers. Scoreless halfway through. Mike O'Connor continues to put zeros up on that board. Five of them. He's thrown 70 pitches through five. Here's a reminder that next Saturday when the Nationals and the Orioles get together the time of the game has been changed at 430 first pitch five minutes later Tom and I will be at Camden Yards for you. It'll be on WDCA 20 here in the district and Masson outside Washington D.C. So we're looking forward now to bringing you all three games both on DCA 20 and Masson of the Baltimore series and two of the three from Fenway Park Monday and Tuesday night. Great breaking ball gets Zimmerman started off here in the bottom of the fifth. Phillies are now down to Tampa Bay three nothing. Can you Jeez. imagine the amount of booing oh, they've heard in that, that ballpark is... all week swept by the Mets maybe swept by Tampa Bay here today. They want to go on the road real bad. I guarantee you that. And it's really something. Phillies had been playing well at home, too. Yeah. Until this homestand. Zimmerman, Fick, and Harris for the Nats in the fifth. Scoreless game. Yankees have out hit Washington 3 2. Well, he's great. just got such great, great late movement to that. Yeah. You got to make him work out of a stretch because he's getting everything perfectly aligned. As he's going up there in that set position. And as most uh, pitchers from the Far East do, they, they, they love to set themselves. They set their, spend a lot of time over the rubber, very patient. He's, this guy's got a great sinker. Yeah, when you think of Hideo Nomo. Oh, yeah. He took forever. I just wonder if somewhere in the past there was a great, great. Japanese pitcher who did that and then all those kids grew up imitating him. Maybe those sort of things happen. But it's been a hallmark of pitchers from that part of the world. Zimmerman reaches oh out and boy. takes the ball up the middle. That's a great base hit. And he deserves a hit after the umpire took one away from him <laughs> first time up. Yeah and now we get to see this guy pitch from a stretch. How about it. This was not his best slider. 
kind of hung up there, but it's a great job by Ryan. You know, he could have just as easily hit that one off the end of the bat. But what Zimmerman is doing is staying closed a lot longer than he was in April, the first part of May. And he's using all the field, hitting the ball up the middle and opposite way with authority. So great job once again by Zimmerman. And Fix got that hole to hit through right now. Robert Fick pulled the ball first time up, but right at Jason Giambi, who's holding the runner. Now Robert can go out there and pull that ball too, hook it, because he strides into the plate. Now Wong, some left-handers will have a tougher time getting inside, especially with the sinker. So you would think that that sinker out over the plate is a pitch that Fick could pull in that hole. Great change. Yeah. Low 80s with that one. Now he goes from 93 with the sinker to as low as 81 with that straight change up we just saw. The lead off man aboard for the Nats. Second time that's happened today. Soriano did it back in the first, but he was doubled up. And right now, Chen Ming Wong is preoccupied with Ryan Zimmerman, who's a very good base runner, four stolen bases and eight attempts this year, but probably as good as anybody on the Washington team going first to third. Yeah, he's really got his head in the game, knows exactly what to do, knows where the outfielders are, the outs, all the situations. Drives this ball out to center. Nothing Zimmerman can do but go a little more than halfway and then come back and that'll be one on one out with Brendan Harris coming up. Bob Carpenter Tom Pachorek happy Father's Day to all you dads and of course we're wearing our wristbands today. Major League Baseball teaming up with Gillette fighting prostate cancer the number one cancer killer of men in the USA. That's right guys and make sure you go out there and get your PSA test the blood work. You know we all take that other test. That is very unpleasant, but you got to get the blood work done to make sure your PSA level. Because there's no reason to contract that cancer anymore. Low and outside to Brendan Harris. He flied to center first time. Yeah, Bob. Especially over the age of 40, you got to yeah. get, get that test. The blood test. Brendan Harris 0 for 4 in the series. Wonderful time for him to get a base hit. Zimmerman with a short lead and Wong sends him back to the bag again. Marlins leading Toronto 2 1, bottom of the fourth in Florida. It's now the fifth in New York and Baltimore still leads the Mets 1 0. Only the third in Philly, but it's Tampa Bay three, Philadelphia nothing. Hit and run. Runner going. That throw way behind the runner. And an easy steal for Zimmerman, his fifth of the year. Boy, Posada looked like he had a slipsies or something there. I like the, the call. Harris a good contact man doesn't make any contact. Ooh, he almost got in Posada's way too. Which would have been interference. Ball just slipped out of his hand. Yeah I'm surprised Posada's not complaining a bit. Because that pitch was outside Harris was reaching for it. And he barely stayed out of the catcher's way. Now a base hit to put the Nats on top. Right side hitting room because Cano is lurking around the runner. And it's two balls one strike. And because of that Giambi plays way off the line at first. Yep, try and cut down that you're going to give him he's more than likely he's not going to hit the ball down that line the first baseline. But if he hits it hard where the second baseman usually is that's a base hit. Instead he will pull it. Zimmerman coming Tony Beasley will send him and he will score one nothing Washington. Well what a great job of base running there by Zimmerman and a terrific job by third base coach Tony Beasley because 
Melky Cabrera got to that ball quickly. A little bit in on the hands. He's able to fight it off in that hole. And Ryan Zimmerman got a great jump on that ball. He knew exactly where Jeter was playing. See, as soon as that ball's hit, he knows nobody's going to make the play. And he cuts that third base bag very nicely. Head first slide. He's in there. Good base running. And as we mentioned Friday night, the Nationals have not been shy about running on the Yankee outfield. No. Those no. are not great arms out there. No, none of them have a good arm. None of them have what you would call Major League average arms. Here's Marlon Bird with the pitcher next. He goes up hacking, fouls one off his foot, strike one. So Brendan Harris delivers right. his second RBI of the year on his eighth hit in his 32nd at bat of the year. The pride of William and Mary. Yeah, he was pretty hacked off that everybody's talking about George Mason now in that league, and nobody talks about William and Mary anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got. There's a reason yeah, for that. Sure is. Got to stick up for your alma mater, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's good for the youngster to come in there. A lot of good play off the bench. Yeah. In the for the uh, Nats. You, you know, know, you look at these guys, Tom. Gary uh, Daryl Ward came in today hitting over 300. Robert Fick at 280. With that base hit, Harris is at 250. So the extra guys are starting to get some action. Yeah. And they're getting enough at bats where they can do some damage. That's exactly right. They can get their timing and, and their rhythm going so they can help the team. Marlon bounces one to second. Jeter goes wide. And Cano's poor throw wipes away the double play possibility. Yeah, he gave that little side flip to Jeter. Maybe that wasn't necessary. Let's take another look at it. a lot of topspin on this ball and he backs up too. So he could have turned. Yeah, that's not really. You don't see Cano do that very often. You can turn and make a good solid throw. Cheater makes a heck of an adjustment and a pirouette move. But you got to expect that from him. Here's O'Connor. Why don't teams take infield anymore? They do it before. If when they take infield they'll do it very early like at three o'clock when nobody's yeah. here and they'll throw but they don't do it certainly don't do it every day but you're right it used to be something that scouts would come and watch so they could gauge the arms of the outfielders first of all yeah well as a fan you know growing up you could always count on watching some great infield after batting practice was over it was the last thing they did before the game started and I always found it fascinating yeah. to watch yeah it was and it was a prerequisite really and all of a sudden they just quit doing it and you never of course it's never done anymore. They just they they extend batting practice so the fans can see that. And then they just uh, the ground crew takes over. Mike O'Connor is gone but the Nats pick up a run a Zimmerman single steal and a Brendan Harris RBI one nothing Washington. Come on dad get a t-shirt. He's been waving and jumping and hollering. That's all right. Having a great time with his little gal there. She's got the uh, fresh squeezed lemonade, which is one of the great treats here at the ballpark. And so far today, a treat has been watching Mike O'Connor against this very powerful Yankee lineup, Tom. He has more than held his own. Darn right he has. But remember his last game in the sixth inning against Colorado? That's when everything fell apart. Mike was cruising in that game, too, and he wound up with some bad numbers. But they put six, four runs on the board. I'll check that. I yeah, got, they got five on, they the, got board five on the board. Five on the board, yeah. And uh, but Mike had only given up one through the first five innings, so I'm sure they're going to check him out, especially in this heat, and see how well he's throwing the ball because this is the Yankee lineup that is relentless. And if you're not making quality pitches, yeah, they can beat you up and beat you in a hurry. Even the cool Derek Jeter has to wipe his brow on a day like this. Jeter Giambi and Alex Rodriguez in the sixth. Jeter of course this is almost like having a leadoff man up there he's done it for the Yankees a number of years. They brought in Johnny Damon. This guy can bat third he can bat second he can lead off anywhere you need him. 
Derek Jeter is five out of ten with two RBIs in the series. That was a mistake. And that's into the corner. That ball was nowhere near where Robert Fick wanted it. And Derek Jeter made Mike O'Connor pay. Well, that sixth inning, I'm just caught my attention as we were going into the break. Mike going out there to pitch the sixth. But it's up and out over the plate, off speed pitch, and it's just not where you want to go with Jeter. He's got an excellent inside out swing, and he showed you right there. So now, Zimmerman's going to have to play third base, regulation third base, with Jambi coming up. Yeah, I can't let Jeter walk over to third with nobody out. And this really shouldn't affect the shift that much because Giambi doesn't hit many ground balls up the middle. Apparently none to the left side of first base. Fastball for a strike. I think Giambi might have been guessing breaking ball there and he couldn't react. It looked like it. That 86 mile an hour fastball was too quick for him. Another. Some guys are relentless. They will keep looking for a pitch till they get it, and some of them sit back on the bench thinking, gee, he never threw me that pitch I was looking for. Yeah, he better look fastball here and react to the curveball. Yeah, that's because Michael paint a fastball under his hands if he doesn't. No, this should be interesting. I hope he triples him up. Oh two, target away. That indicates breaking ball, and that's what it was. You know, Giambi, another one of those veteran guys who just gears it up when runners are out there to be driven in. Yeah, he's good. 35 of his 53 RBIs. Just don't throw him anything down and out over the plate, especially with the fastball. Big breaking ball popped up on the infield. It's got to be Zimmerman and he's the only yeah. one over there. Really using his glove. He was looking straight up into the sun. That was a tough play. He had to go all the way from third base over to almost second base make the play. And Michael Connor did a good thing too, going over to cover third because Jeter was going to tag up. Boy he hung that one. Thank you Lord. <laughs> he missed it. But if you look at the shadows. The sun is just over the first base roof and he was looking right into it. Oh yeah that was a tough play and he just skied that. It doesn't right. get any easier. Here's a rod. Yeah. Boy you dodge one bullet and you get a Hall of Famer. Then if you dodge this one you get one of the best hitting Yankee catchers ever ever ever. Strike one and the key right now is O'Connor's getting ahead of hitters. Now you can't make a mistake, especially with a breaking ball to A Rod. He will hit it nine miles. If you're going to get beat, I'd say get beat on his hands. At Wrigley Field, Mark Pryor, in the top of the first inning against the Tigers, just gave up six runs oh. on three homers, getting one out. Unbelievable. We're checking to see if he's still in the game. Oh, my. One ball one strike here in Washington with Jeter at second one out one nothing game in the sixth and Alex Rodriguez pops it out of play right side. Best head of the day right there. Hmm. One ball two strikes and it's a fastball up. I like it. Good yeah. pitch selection. Now if he's going to throw that curveball he's going to have to throw a biter at his best. 
A number one if he and if he misses bounce it up there. He might get him to go for it. Oh no. Robert Fick misses it. And Derek Jeter goes to third mm. with one out on a wild pitch. Yeah, there was a communication problem right there. Robert may have thought that was going to be a curveball or a changeup. And he threw the fastball. Watch how late he reacts to it. Yeah, he thought that ball maybe was going to come back over the back door. You know, Jeter at second base, he can signal the signs because he knows most, you know, he knows everybody's signs playing being a middle infielder. So he they're afraid of relaying get to the pitch to the hitter but that happens so often that you throw there's so much miscommunication that they get there anyway. Three two pitch now to a rod. And yes. oh, oh my. Where was that one. Ball four it's called first and third one out. Boy. Frank Robinson can't believe it. That ball is a strike. It certainly wasn't low. It throws a good fastball strike away. That one was up a little bit. Staying hard with him. Fastball, fastball, fastball. Change up. Or oh, that was the fastball. And then he picked that right there. Yeah. That's like the old Rogers Hornsby story when the rookie pitcher wanted to know where was that pitch? And the umpire said, Mr. Hornsby will let you know when it's a strike. Right. Man. Well, you got to get a ground ball. Posada doesn't hit many. First and third, one out. He's only hit into one double play this year. And he flies one to right field for what should be an immediate RBI. Jose yeah. Guillen catches the fair ball, and this game is tied. Whoa! Good, good throw ball. by Jose. But the Yankees tie the game. Yeah, that should have been the third out of the inning, though. That was fair ball too. I'll tell you what Jose Guillen showed his arm right there. Jose tries to get in front of it catches it over his throwing shoulder and rips it. Great throw right on the money. Unfortunately Derek Jeter was the runner. So the lead runs at first base with Rodriguez two outs now. And mm. it'll be Mike O'Connor against Robinson Cano. And with the runner going, a bouncing ball right to second. Vidro knocks it down, and that's it for the Yankees in the sixth. But Derek Jeter helps to manufacture the run with a leadoff double, and we're all tied. We just had the sixth inning stretch at the ball game. They just played tape me out to the ball game. Are we changing history here? Yes. Well, maybe next inning will reveal something special that would happen during that time. Screech is having a good time, and here's the in-game box for the Nationals. Ryan Zimmerman manufacturing a run last inning with a leadoff hit, stole second, and scoring on a very good base running play when Brendan Harris drove him home. Yeah, that was great work by Ryan. Terrific base running, and same thing you got to be said for Derek Jeter on behalf of the Yankees in their half of the sixth. Here's Alfonso Soriano. He got a strike, yeah. and he rams it right to A Rod over at third base. Boy, you can't hit it any harder than that. Standing right there was hooking. Yeah. Wang left that ball out over the plate after jamming Alfonso all day. Here's Vidro. That's right down the middle. Oh. 
last month or so very unkind to Jose. Now when he bats second he hits 359 when he bats 30 he hits 246. But then you have Royce Clayton who's batted a lot better in the number two hole as well. Yeah. So that's put Vidro third most of the time. And he's been hitting a steady stream of fly balls. That's exactly right. Not not finishing off his swing, just kind of feeling for the ball. A lot of pop-ups. Let's have a PNC classic national moment. And it came yesterday, Tom, with that go-ahead triple to the gap in right center. Darrell Ward chugging his way home. He is certainly chugging. Go, Darrell. Go, go. He did it. I think I can. I think I can. He knew he could. <laughs> Yeah, that, you don't see many triples. And that was a fun one to watch, especially with D. Ward flying around those bases. This is a ballpark where you should see more than yeah, other places. You, exactly. But they don't come when you hit fly balls. That was a low laser that Jose hit. He might be looking for something here with two outs, bases empty that he can hit out of the park. He chops it down to third. That's a fair ball. Alex Rodriguez. A stretch by Giambi and the Nationals go quickly in the sixth after six innings of play in the rubber game of the series all tied at one. Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by Southwest Airlines with more flights to more places than ever before Southwest is taking low fares farther visit Southwest.com by Taco Bell and by Jim Coleman Toyota. A little breezy today in our nation's capital. Beautiful day in the world's greatest tourist city. And down on East Capitol Drive at RFK, fans are having a great time with Screech, the Yankees, the Nats, and a 1 1 game as we go top seven with Bernie Williams. Chen Ming Wong scheduled to hit for the Yankees, and then Johnny Damon. No activity in the Yankee bullpen. I imagine Wong's. Gonna hit. That was Mike O'Connor's 85th pitch of the day. Wong is next. He has fanned twice. And he has thrown 72. They've both been great battling. I'm telling you, it's not easy to pitch on a day like today. Hot shot to oh, his boy. left. Jose Pedro is there. That's a huge out. Big out right there. Because, because now, now they can't bunt anybody. That's right. Or you can't try to bunt anybody. But you know, you just have that advantage. Uh, an American League pitcher hitting in this circumstance should be a good mental lift. 45,157 today. <laughs> Do you think they like the Yankees can bring people out to the ballpark? And the three day total is after out number two. Thank you. 135,000 and one. Isn't that great? Super. And the Yankees average over 50,000 a game at Yankee Stadium, which is. So the three day know. average is 45,000 straight up. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Nice going, Nets fans. Now we hope a lot more of them will come back when the team plays the next homestand. Here's Johnny Damon, two outs, bases empty. And Johnny's 0 for 3. Like I said last time, he can jump out in a heartbeat, not look good, and then just find a way to get on base and then use that great speed of his. He's got 13 stolen bases and late innings. He's a very good player. We all know that. We're batting average of 290 at the start of this year. Mike O'Connor's pitched him very well today. Strikeout on the breaking ball in the dirt. Fly ball to right. It was routine. Bouncer back to the pitcher. Even if you're a rookie, it's tough when these hitters. Tough for them when they're seeing you for the first time. Oh yeah. Well, well the Mets have come up big. They've scored four against the Orioles. David Wright with a grand slam. Marlins lead Toronto 4-1. How are the Phillies doing? They've scored a couple of runs, but still trail Tampa Bay 3-2. 
Tell you what, David Wright is going to get a lot of consideration for MVP of this league. He should. Right now, he's the best player on the best team in the league. Right. Yeah. The Mets have the best record by one game over St. Louis. You know, overall, they may have the most talent in the major leagues. Johnny Damon wow. breaking a bat. Can anybody catch it? Jose can. Vidro is there. And it's a 1 2 3, top of the seventh for Mike O'Connor. Wow. Who may be throwing his best game of the year right now. Stopping the Yankees on only four hits. It's time for the Geico seventh inning stretch. They did take me out to the ball game one inning ago so that we could do God bless America here in the seventh. The seven. That was one of the great God bless America renditions you will ever hear from Caleb Green. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Washington Nationals may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the descriptions and accounts of this game without the expressed written consent of the Washington Mas Nationals may not be disseminated. Here's Daryl Ward leading off bottom seven. One one game. Great afternoon at the ballpark. Tom there is such a great crowd here. It is breaking an attendance record that was one day old. That's how good that's it's been. what a good crowd we have today. <laughs> hey it's a good crowd. I'll tell you <laughs> forty five thousand eighty five yesterday forty five one fifty seven today. Terrific. The old yard is hopping this weekend and a bouncing ball foul one one to Daryl Ward. It will be Zimmerman and Fick to follow Daryl Ward of course because he pinch hits so much. He's the David Letterman of hitters. He likes late it late. Night. That's pretty good. 370. My goodness. That's crunch time too. And if that's a special kind of hitter that wants to be in there late in the ball game, usually against the best relief pitcher on the other team. Yeah. Bouncer right side. Daryl Ward's hit three ground balls today. Robinson Cano throws him out. Now the Nats have not had a hit since Brendan Harris and his RBI single back in the fifth. Well Wong is the premier ground ball pitcher. If not the best in major leagues from ratio of ground ball outs to fly ball outs is incredible. He relies on his defense and he usually gets pretty good stuff from his guys in the infield here. Zimmerman touched him for a base hit up the middle. That was when Ryan was behind in the count. And then he takes a fastball high here. So Zimmerman now has a seven game hitting streak. And during those seven games, he's 12 for 28, batting 429. And a bouncer right at Robinson Cano. <laughs> Sunday afternoon at RFK Stadium. Happy Father's Day to all you dads. A couple of old dads up here bringing you the ball game today. Bob Carpenter, Tom Pachurik. Enjoying a wonderful weekend when 135 of our closest friends, 135,000, have come to visit us. And they've seen some really interesting baseball. Friday night's game was intense. Yesterday's the incredible comeback, and today a pitcher's duel. Right. That's on the corner to Robert Fick, who's 0 for 2. And Wong hasn't lost any velocity off that fastball. Good sinker at 93 right there on the outside corner. Yankees bullpen quiet. Nationals is not. Mike O'Connor is at the 93 pitch mark through seven. And that temperature on that field's got to be way over 100 degrees. Gary Majeski has been throwing by the way those 93 pitches. Mike's had about five games this year with more than that. Slow bouncer up the middle. Cano is going to throw out the entire middle of the order here in the seventh. It's Cabrera then Jeter and Giambi straight ahead for the Yankees. RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. Quite a ball game here on getaway day the rubber game of the three game series here's our game summary the national scoring came when Ryan Zimmerman led off the fifth with a hit stole second on a hit and run by the way.
and then scored on the Brendan Harris base hit. Yankees got their run when Dater, Derek Jeter doubled in the sixth, and then one out later scored on the Jorge Posada sack fly. That's been it. Mike O'Connor is out of the game. Daryl Ward is out of the game. And Brian Schneider is in with Gary Majeski as Robert Fick moves to first base. Well, you would think that Schneider would be batting in the pitcher spot. Mm -hmm. I swear you've got me brainwashed. I almost wrote Schneider man on my scorecard when he came in. <laughs> I already did. <laughs> Does whatever Schneider can. Well, Frank Robbins had sent something that delighted Daryl Ward because he had a big smile on his face. Daryl, of course, a very happy guy when he plays this game to begin with. Melky Cabrera for the Yankees. And Gary Majeski has to do a better job of controlling the strike zone than he did on Friday night. This guy's got all the talent in the world and a hot fastball, but he was behind a lot of hitters. Bullpen was pretty good yesterday. As Saul Rivera gave up two runs in an inning and two thirds, but then Mike Stanton, John Roush, who got the win, and Chad Cordero with the save all had scoreless single innings. Yeah, they were really good when they had to be. This is a big out right here, this first one. Uh oh. You got Jeter coming up next, and then Jambi and A-Rod. You cannot walk this uh -uh. man. No. I mean, if Milky Cabrera hits one a mile, that's almost better than walking him. Three to the count. Threw him a strike. It's out of play to the left side. Gary Majeski, a third of an inning Friday night. Two runs on four hits. There was also a walk. Yeah, just that's wiped that history. one off. Yeah. yeah. Threw him another strike, fouled upstairs. Now the Orioles have picked up two runs. Mets lead 4 3 in the fifth at Shea. Philly still trailing 3 2. Marlins still leading Toronto 4 1. Braves play tonight against the Red Sox. John Smoltz and Kurt Schilling. How about that? Uh oh. Anything but that. Yeah, he missed badly on that fastball. So now we'll see what Joe Torrey's got in mind for Jeter. He could bunt him. He could go hit and run, or he can just let him swing away. He's two for three, a double, a single, and he scored the one run the Yankees have. And he's swinging the bat real well right now. I'd be surprised if he was bunting. Frank Robinson just moved Jose Guillen about 10 feet toward the right field corner and he moved Marlon Byrd from left center to right center. Yeah there's a huge gap in left center now so you got to think they're going to stay with the fastball pitch this guy hard. Derek Jeter has grounded into nine double plays this year. Only Robinson Cano more on their club. All right, here comes the pitching coach. So we know what the next pitch is going to be. Strike, fastball, fastball. Well, in this case, though, who knows? Well, Gary Majeski's got to be proud of that fastball. He's got to throw it 94 miles an hour and hope he can get Jeter. I mean, Jeter is vulnerable with that kind of stuff in on his hands. And this is Gary Majeski's inning. When you think about it, Majeski's got a stuff similar to Wong. You know, that good movement on the fastball. Derek Jeter is murder in situations like this. And there was the fastball for a strike. Jeter late on it. And the 
counts even one one. Now I think as Jeter gets a little bit older he is becoming a great breaking ball hitter. And then you can still handle the fastball certainly but. Uh, I think he looks for more pitches now. And he's very good off speed. I'd stay away from that here especially the way that the Nats are defending him. Target inside Look at this. Can Robert Fick get there. Not quite. Now that what a one great hurt. pitch that was. See that's where you got a pitch cheater. I mean that running fastball right there that explode. I can't believe. He uh, that bat didn't explode. Robert Fick got a good jump on that ball. Just yeah. uncatchable. He didn't hit it hard enough. Yeah. To get it high enough to catch it. One thing you can always say is you can jam a good hitter. This guy's a really good hitter. Got him on a fastball away. Boy, the what jam a job set up the next pitch no away. Question about it. He was looking in unconsciously or whatever. And Jeter just got beat on a fastball away which is where he usually likes it. Ninety four miles an hour on the outside corner. Yeah you could see that front side opening up just yeah. a little bit early because he know he knew that he was going to double him up inside. What a great call by Schneider. As great as Jeter is that just goes to show you fans when you pound a guy inside it is on their mind. You just can't forget about that. And Jeter with great plate coverage normally not able to get to that one. And now here's strike one to Giambi. Well if there's a ground ball on the right side of the infield Ryan Zimmerman will turn the double play. <laughs> That's right. We could have a six five three or a four five three here or a three five three. You never know something like that that Giambino shift is on. And with Gary's arm I wouldn't risk that breaking ball you hang one to this guy and that's a two spot. Yep. Uh, especially you, you know if you could swing it back on the inside part of the plate John be very vulnerable from the waist up. Keep it up. Ninety two miles an hour. That's not as hard as Gary can throw but he had some movement on that one. Yeah a little late movement. Tailing away from John B who is real close to hitting that one by the way. Get that one up a little bit. Climb the ladder. Got him with another heater. Two outs. Oh he's bringing it. And it'll be Gary Majeski against Alex Rodriguez. He's not fooling around. Here's Rarin back and firing that 94 mile an hour gas. Giambi with that little dip as you can see as he's coming forward. That type of velocity is just a little bit too much for him right now. Runner at first two outs now. Alex Rodriguez a perfect day. Two walks around a single. Frank Robinson moving his outfielders again. A little more of a pulling position than they were in against Jeter. Well Mike Myers made a mistake on a changeup up and out over the plate and A-Rod hit it for that base hit. This ball is scorched. Left center. It'll plug the gap. And Melky Cabrera being waved around. The Yankees take the lead. Rodriguez gets his 50th RBI of the season. A Rod. Jumped all over that fastball out over the plate. The idea was good but it was down and right in his wheelhouse. Didn't get it far in enough got those arms extended. 
And Cabrera scores all the way from first. Boy. Here's Posada. Well, Gary Majeski got the left handed Giambi after Jeter. Now he throws the ball away, and over to third base goes Alex Rodriguez. Well, that leadoff walk so often. Comes out to hurt you. Boy, he battled hard. You got to tip your cap to Cabrera for a real good at bat. If that pitch right there to A Rod, I don't know. He didn't have to hit it that hard. It was the best swing by far that he's taken this series. This is a day when you've held the Yankees to mm. five hits in over seven innings. Usually a formula for victory, but their pitcher's been just as good, a little better. Yeah. Majeski throws a slider in on a 2 0 pitch that had Posada frozen. Yeah, that's a shame, too, because when you look at the call in the sixth, A Rod walked, but that pitch looked like it was right there, and that set up the sacrifice fly for Posada. And that would have never happened had they made the right call. Now Posada fights off a pitch in on his hands and the counts even 2 2. All time record crowd here. Nearly 45,200. Seeing quite a battle this weekend. Yankees now in a position to take two out of three. And the count goes three and two. But we did found out, find out yesterday that Mariano Rivera is indeed a human being, not a machine. But can you get him two days in a row? That's yeah. what you're looking at if you don't score in the bottom of this inning. And now Majeski, who's walked three hitters in his last inning of work, puts another one aboard. Dangerous hitter now in Cano has got that hole to hit through between first and second. Well, if you want to come back and win this game, you really can't go down two runs here. Yeah. Well, it's never say die. You, you saw the team come back from a seven run deficit yesterday and beat the arguably the best reliever in the history of the game. That ball slapped up the middle. Harris is there. Oh, and the Yankees will get one. Robert Fick had to dig that out. Alex Rodriguez got the big hit, a two out double, his 50th RBI of the year. WDCA 20 Monday and Tuesday. Off day Thursday before we head on to Baltimore to take on those Orioles. And you saw, of course, on our graphic there, don't forget, we are on WDCA 20 in the district. Saturday at Baltimore 4:30. Andy Phillips is in to play first base for Jason Giambi as Brendan Harris leads off and takes ball one bottom of the eighth. Well Wong has been masterful one hit one run four hits no walks that's key two strikeouts but relying on that ground ball sinker. And you mentioned Tom he's a different pitcher from the stretch position but he does nothing to hurt himself to get into that position if you're going to put him on the stretch that's because you've had to get a base hit off him. He's only given up hits in two innings today. Two in the first two in the fifth. Brendan taking all the way on two and oh. Jared Wright, doesn't it? Yeah, that's got to be a yeah. side session. Right. 
Right. They did add a pitcher to their roster today. Jose Viras, a right-hander, gives them five right-handers in their bullpen. A big pitch coming up right here on three and one for Brendan. Yeah. Marlon Bird on deck. Will he be batting with a man on base? No. Yes, he will. Uh -huh. First walk. It's the old analyst jinx. That's right. Great control through seven, well, but he lost the leadoff manner of the eighth. This That'll guy's sound the alarm for Ron Guidry. Don't let him come in the pitch. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to say something great about it. he's unhittable. This guy. That'll, that'll be a kiss of go. death. There you go. And Brendan Harris has done very well for himself. Played excellent shortstop. Got the only RBI single in the fifth inning, and now he draws the walk. And I would imagine Marlon Bird would be bunting in this situation, trying to get set up Brian Schneider. Only the third inning of the day when the Nats have a base runner. You know, and that'll tell you just the confidence that Joe Torre doesn't have in his bullpen right now. On a hot day, temperature over 100 degrees, yeah. he's staying with his number one man until maybe the ninth inning. And I don't know if Mariano's going to pitch again. Well, they're scrambling out there now. Mariano Rivera, a lot of pitches yesterday, but I have a feeling he would be available for three outs in oh, the ninth yeah. if they needed it. No question about it. But I'm sure they don't want to overextend him and bring him in the eighth inning again. Oh, no, no, I don't think there's any way we'd see him this inning. That would be amazing. Here's Bird. Marlin squares, lays it down. Oh, I wish you'd. I was there. hoping Posada <laughs> would throw to second because Brendan Harris was already there. 2 4 on the sacrifice. That'll give Brian Schneider and Alfonso Soriano chances to tie this game. Yeah, that's what you want. Boy, he deadens it out of front of home plate just enough where Posada, thinking about it, good jump over there by Brendan Harris, and that's the reason he didn't throw. So, there is activity in that Yankee bullpen. Derek Jeter might have been the key to that play. Watch Jeter's left arm as he covers the bag. Go to first. Oh, go to yeah. first. Yeah. Jeter knows. I'll tell you, that's why he's the captain. Those little things. Right down Schneider, the middle man. to Brian Schneider. First at bat of the day for Brian with 26 RBIs on the year. And a 233 batting mark. He times his RBIs well. He's usually a clutch guy. Need one right here. He drives it out to left Go. center. Ball's got some carry to it. Cabrera will get there. And Brendan Harris has to stay at second base. You know, I thought he hit that one a little bit better than that because looking out there, Cabrera was playing very shallow. I was hoping that would get over his head, but no dice. You know what? On this weekend, maybe it should come down to this. The ex-Yankee. Yep. This they're is talking big. about how they're going to pitch him, and I'm sure it'll be carefully if they don't walk him. I don't see them walking him intentionally, but yeah. I see them maybe telling him, don't you dare throw a fastball anywhere near the plate. Or pitch around him. You know, I think that Joe Torre's got enough respect for Jose Vidro in that number two spot that he won't put him on or put the uh, lead runner on base. But we'll see how they want to play it. A lot of different things have happened. A lot of managers are using different strategies these days. He wasn't expecting a fastball over the middle of the plate. Chad Cordero in case the Nats take the lead here because Soriano could knock one out of the park. Mike Stanton most probably in the ninth if the Nats are behind or tied. Then an off speed breaking ball. He had Alfonso's shoelaces untied with that one.
This is huge. He's got to find a way to put the bat on the ball with a runner at second and two outs. He's not choking up though. Well, fish were biting, weren't biting on that particular pitch. And then Alex Rodriguez. What do you want me to do? You want me to guard the line? Nah. <laughs> Just take the relay from the left field corner when the double comes in. One ball and two strikes. Breaking ball away. Ooh, that one almost got by Posada. Didn't yeah. backhand it. He kind of turned his thumb down trying to make that play. That was interesting. Maybe he messed him up on the pitch selection. Maybe he didn't think it was a slider coming. Well, a lot of deuces up there. Two two pitch. Uh -huh. That's low ball three. All right, you got three two. First base is open. Now do you throw him your best pitch, which is obviously your sinker, or do you try and fool him with your other two pitches? Jose Vidro. Next, if Soriano reaches, that's a backup breaking ball that stays up and in, and the Nationals have the lead run on base with two outs. Two walks. The only two walks of the inning, and Jose Vidro's got a chance to be the star here. I think they'd rather have Jose hit left-handed, though. This is really interesting. Right now, the Yankees still only have Jarrett Wright throwing in the bullpen. They had Mike Myers. He threw 76 Shaw. pitches on Friday night. You know, Joe's bullpen is a little beaten up at this point. Here's Vidro, 0 for 3. That one is outside. Hmm. All the Nationals need right here is for Jose to be Jose Vidro. Contact hitter, line drive hitter. Yeah, he's hitting too many fly balls now. There's a line drive Get in there. Heading Get for the gap, and Melky Cabrera puts it away. Vidro hit it well, but Cabrera had the speed to get there. And I'm telling you, if he doesn't make that play, it's a 3 2 ball game. My. The Nationals frustrated. It's 2 1 Yankees into the ninth. Well, just sitting here thinking about what could have been there, and the Yankees still lead 2 1. We go top of the ninth. Our buddies, the Potomac Nationals, return home to Fitzner Stadium a week from Thursday. Upcoming homestand features two spectacular fireworks shows in celebration of the fourth and an appearance by Reggie, the Purple Party Dude. For a complete promotional schedule or more info, 703-590-2311 or go to PotomacNationals.com. Man, I'll tell you what, that was a terrific play that Cabrera made to end the last inning, Bob, because he's played shallow in left field. He got a terrific jump, and I, I already put two runs on the board. Well, Soriano was the runner Man. at first. He certainly oh. would have followed Brendan Harris home. Yeah, that's a tough break for Vidro. Now here's Gary Majeski. Bernie Williams first pitch top of the night bouncing ball Vidro one out and they're going to stay with Wong here who gets a chance to pitch a complete game Isn't that something watch this boy Cabrera is off with the crack of the bat and he got there in a heartbeat boy that was great no chance for Johnny Damon on that one yeah, they covered that outfield pretty good those three guys. I got to think that Mariano can't pitch today Bob. Yeah. He's like not. he's going through some you know uh, simulated thing without a ball just kind of going through his motion out there in left field. I saw him a few minutes ago. He has stopped now. Maybe testing to see if his shoulder could get loose at all. But right now Wong is the hitter. And he has a chance to pitch the first complete game of his career. Well, he has a save this year. 
They needed him out of the bullpen once in between turns and he came in to pitch a save which has only been done a handful of times by guys like John Candelaria Bob Walk Terry Mulholland and most recently Daniel Cabrera two years ago. Now you got to think that there's not a whole lot of confidence brimming about the Yankee bullpen especially Farnsworth not being out hurt his back on Friday night. Gary Majeski tri just tried to trick the opposing pitcher on a 2 2 count. Give him the heat Ricky. <laughs> Is that Ricardo. No that's uh, Ricky Ricky Vaughn. Wild thing of course. There's the heat two outs. Third strikeout for Majeski in an inning and two thirds. Johnny Damon 0 for 4 today. 5 for 14 in the series. Yankees only have five hits. The Nationals four. And the Nationals have only had base runners in three innings. Two singles in the first. Two in the fifth. Two walks in the eighth. Boy and I thought that this was going to be a high scoring affair because of the conditions were for the hitter without question the, the pitcher is going to get hot tendency to get a little tired hang some pitches the ball should carry better in the daytime. Once again Nostradamus was dead wrong. <laughs> and the bad news from the rest of the division is everybody else is ahead. Marlins 4 1 over Toronto. Mets 5 4 over Baltimore in the eighth and seventh respectively and the Phillies in the fifth lead the Tampa Bay 6 3 if Atlanta wins tonight and the Nationals lose Washington's in last place because Florida is about to win their eighth in a row. They got some good young players over there and they're putting it together. There's a good wake up call. Lance Barksdale. He's probably getting on a plane just like the rest of us after this. With his bell rung. One ball and two strikes. Yes. Oh. Man. Well he's missed a he's missed a couple today but he still had a better weekend than the World Cup referee yesterday. Yeah that's for sure. Watch this. What's wrong with that pitch. Well it's a squeeze job like that that walked Alex Rodriguez back in the sixth and gave the Yankees their first run. Now here's two two to Damon. He jacks one to right Jose v, or rather Jose Guillen right there and we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Guillen, a pinch hitter, and then Ryan Zimmerman for the Nationals. Nationals baseball on Masson has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With more flights to more places than ever before, Southwest is taking low fares farther. Visit Southwest.com. By PNC Bank. By Ferris Baker Watts. We want your business. We'll earn your trust. And by your Washington area Toyota dealers. Will there be another comeback win? The deficit yesterday, nine. The deficit today, one. And to the mound, Chen Ming Wong in front of lots of Nats fans. He's at the 96 pitch mark through eight innings, and that's not bad at all. This guy's thrown as many as 109 pitches on the year. Jose Guillen leads off. And one of those pressure situations we've talked to him about. One of the Dominican fellas. It's always yeah. great when you see one of the guys from your country to come and doing what he's doing. And uh, you know, you guys got had to give a lot of credit to Jim because Jim was the one, you know, that put him in that situation. 
And a lot of people say, no, he's not going to play there. And Jim say, well, he will play there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, I give him, Jim, a lot of credit for, you know. Just... Jose Guillen, one for three today. Marlon Anderson is in the on deck circle. And if you can get Guillen aboard, next guy up can really handle the bat. Then you have Zimmerman, Mr. RBI lately. And Wong gets ahead 0 2 now. Hey, what? He's still throwing us hard. Last inning, a little bit of control glitches, and he made a. He walked two, and then a couple balls were hit hard. See, there's the, he missed that one too. Wow. As well pitched a game as this has been on both clubs. It's hard to believe, yeah. It could be even better. Yeah. Because a lot of close pitches that are borderline that could be called strikes have not. One and two to Jose. All too high. Late inning heroics yesterday. Yankees do have two throwing in the bullpen. Wong has reached the 100 pitch mark. And Guillen hits it the other way, a bouncer outside first. Jose Guillen, since returning a week ago, 8 for 25. That's a 360 batting mark with a home run and six RBIs in eight games now. Another chopper foul. It's like Proctor and that's John Myers. Hoff, yeah. Mike Myers. Had to wait to see the delivery to make sure that was Mike Myers. There's no mistaking that. No. Party on, Carp. Well, let's hope. Fastball up. Bounced over the mound. Cano on the run. He's got Guillen by plenty. Now Marlon Anderson in the cleanup spot, which was occupied by the pitcher. Well, the Nats hoping to win today. Leave town with a five and six home stand. And it could be four and seven. Disappointing really either way, considering how it started with three out of four against the Phillies last weekend. Then the four game disaster against the Rockies. Then you got the Yankees coming in. So the Nats about to lose their second consecutive series without a rally here. That's a fastball away. One ball, one strike to Marlon Anderson. Who's back to his old tricks as a pinch hitter now, seven for 35 with an RBI on the year, and they're his career numbers. Ground ball, right side, base hit, and Marlon Anderson does it again. That'll bring up. Really, the best hitter you'd want up in this situation right now, based on recent results, and that's Ryan Zimmerman. He got a sinker down. Marlon Anderson's a very good low ball hitter, and he finds that hole between Cano and the first baseman. Cano can't get there. Chances are he hit it way too hard. Ryan one for three today. A base hit up the middle in the fifth scored the Nats only run of the day. On the outfield they're playing deeper for Ryan Zimmerman trying to guard against the double. 
keep that guy from scoring on an extra base hit. See, they're a little bit deeper, even Cabrera in, in left field. And you got Wong working from the stretch again. Zimmerman! Yes! There it goes! There it goes! Yeah! Nationals win! Three to two! This is incredible. What a great finish. Zimmerman, the young man from Virginia, comes out and beats the Yankees almost single-handedly from an offensive standpoint. When you look at what he's done, two-run homer, my goodness, and walking off, making the Yankees walk off the field is unbelievable. He got a pitch upstairs, sinker didn't sink, and Ryan knew it from the get-go. He got his hands above the ball and crushes it out of here. And you called it. You're, he's the guy you wanted up there in that situation. He did it. Ryan Zimmerman with his 10th home run of the year. RBI total up to 46 with one swing. He's had some great moments already. He just comes out of the dugout with a curtain call. And Ryan Zimmerman amazes this big crowd by putting the Nationals over the top, beating the Yankees 3-2. to two. The swing of the year for the Nets. Yes. And now they've taken two out of three from New York when all hope seemed to be lost.